they have this job is on the line and every game we play has to be a must win. Over 50 injuries this season, which is totally ridiculous. And I don't have a possible nine points. We got two points. That's totally ridiculous. Because I put it here, if Gary Southgate is in, is ever becomes a United, um, manager, I am Gary Southgate out from the very first day. Hello, welcome to Die Hard United, the one stop for everything Manchester United. Forgive my absence, but let's just go straight into everything happening with Manchester United since the last time I've been on here, on um, the last week's months, uh, last week's days and hours. Let's get started. Um, first things first, our next game is against the Burnham which is on Saturday. And we know that, um, the last time we played Burnham we lost, was it 3-0 or so? And, um, we need to, it's a must win, basically. The hardest job is on the line. And every game we play has to be a must win. And the season has been riddled with injuries. We have had over 50 injuries this season, which is totally ridiculous. And I don't, I don't know why people expect us to have a style of play, expect us to play well with this much injuries. And the fact that this player's mentality is very poor. We, um, we lost to Bonamont, um, in the first leg. This is the second leg. And we expect that the players have that in their head that this is a must win and they must win. No matter what players the manager sets out um, in lineup, everybody has to have the mentality of is a must win. Have to fight, have to you know fight to win on Saturday, and hopefully we get that win because it is very important. Our last three games, uh, which was basically Brentford, um, Chelsea, and Liverpool, we got out of a possible nine points, we got two points. That is disappointing. Totally ridiculous. We got two points. Of course, to show you that the mentality of these players are not really up there. Um. In most of these games, we had the chance. We had, we should have won basically all three games, but we end up giving it out from two draws and a loss. And those games we played well, we, at some point, we are on the higher foot to win those games, so we end up losing it, um, um, giving it away to the opponents. So yeah, let's game against the Panama on Saturday. Let's see what happens with that. Um, that's not news. Of course, you can see the players are training. Everybody's training. Everybody's fit. Not everybody's fit. <laughs> People are fit. Uh, we have some players back. But of course, like I said before, this season has been riddled with injuries and it's just, um, totally pathetic. Um, so yeah, the next feature is on the line. And according to the report, John Wilcox, Wilcox, who is going to be our new technical director after the exit of John Mota, after spending 11 years at Manchester United, John Mota left the club earlier this week and his replacement is going to be Jason Wilcox, who is at, um, um, Southampton. But he's not yet officially, he's not yet officially in the job, but negotiations are going pretty well and he should be in the job, um, at least by next month. And, um, also the natural who is going to be our new sporting director. The negotiations with Newcastle has stalled. It's, it's currently going slowly. Um, but he's not expected to be really part of the summer transfer window. So that's still going to be far. Um, so, but according to the reports, Jason Wilcox and Dana Schwartz are the people who is going to decide the future of Everything hard, and that's making no sense. Honestly, it makes absolutely no sense. And but, uh, um, I would expect our new CEO, uh, Omar Barada should, should be in, um, in charge of that also. But he also is not even in the job. So three people or two or three people who is meant to select our new manager are all not in the job yet. So they're all, they're all going to come in towards the ending of the season and then boom, starting Tag the manager and get the new placement doesn't make any sense. So hopefully Tenag is giving the new season, uh, the summer central window and the new season to really change lots of things at the club. And uh, yeah, if he doesn't do well next season, they can suck him. But let's see what happens with that because for now, the more we try to get results out of our upcoming games, the more he solidifies his chances of being um, our manager for next season. And of course, Tenag has said that he's very confident his job is on the line and um, we don't know what, what will happen with that. But also. Also, guess what? 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 My United have been recently linked with Gareth Southgate to be <laughs> to be our new uh, manager or someone to replace Eritrea if Eritrea gets sacked, and that is totally ridiculous. How can Gareth Southgate be our be? How can Gareth Southgate be the new Manchester United manager if they are get sacked? It makes absolutely no 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 sense. English, the English national team have lots of talents, but they are shit. English, English um, national team football is boring. International football is boring as a whole, but watching England play is boring. What they, what they, what, what are their common results? 1 0, 2 1, 2 0. Boring. With the kind of talent they have, you expect them to play an exciting, um, brand of football. But on that Gareth Southgate, they are boring. They have not won anything. And 
all of a sudden, Gareth Southgate becomes someone in contention for the Manchester United job. Ineos comes in um, to give us a hope of a new future, a bright future, and Gareth Southgate is being linked to be the one to take us there. That's absolutely rubbish. But of course, um, also, Graham Potter is also linked with that. Graham Potter did awful at Chelsea and he's meant to be someone to take us to a new level. Makes no sense. Make it make sense. Absolutely rubbish. And I wonder how the Ineos group are welcoming those rumors. But there's, there's also concrete links that, you know, Dana Schwartz, okay, Dana Schwartz, is, Dana Schwartz during his time at Brighton worked with Graham Potter and during his time in the English, in the English national team worked with Gareth Southgate. So basically the, English press, because of his relationship with these, these two coaches, they are linking him to us. But some say um, we have held up with Gary Southgate. I put it here, if Gary Southgate is in, is, ever becomes a United um, manager, I am Gary Southgate out from the very first day. It makes absolutely zero sense. And also, we have been linked with Roberto De Zabi of Brighton. He did, after Potter went to Chelsea last season, he was, he, he was Potter's replacement at Brighton. Like, uh, he came in last season. They did pretty well. But that was because the structure at Brighton is so good that, um, in, even if Desabi leaves, a new manager comes in, they're going to perform very well because they already know the kind of manager they, they're going to get to like play what they want to play and fit their system very well. And he did very well last season, but this season Brighton has been shit. So I wonder how someone with no, with no CV is being linked to the, uh, United job. He has been having a very bad season. Um, they are, they fine, Tenag has had a very bad season this season, which can say is due to injuries and everything. Brighton also have had a very bad season. So why are we being linked with Rob to Desabi? One can conveniently stick with, stick with, um, um, Tenag. So I don't know. So we have been linked with lots of managers, but you expect that, you know, is it, is it in your, is it new in your reign? And, um, lots, the English press basically doesn't like El Tenag. And they are really pushing for Tenag to be sacked. And this is their own scheme. This is their way of, you know, talking, making a false narrative and looking for ways for the manager to be sacked. But we, the fans, know that, fine, Tenag is to blame for some of the problems, but he is not the real problem um, while we are playing this band. It is a normal thing. Ole, um, Ole comes in, performs in his first season, second season, everything begins to, begins to turn to shit. Louis, um, Jose Mourinho, first season, one in Europa League, second season, everything begins to turn to shit. So it's not a new thing. But if you check it, the mentality of these players are the problem. You set a team to play against Liverpool. You expect those players to have the mentality of this is a big game. We have to turn up. Play against Chelsea. This is a big game. We have to turn up. Forget about who the manager picked. Everybody who he picks needs to play well. Needs to play up to the level. And you see some people playing rubbish. They're not just good enough. And that's just a simple truth. They're not good enough. But we see what happens, what happens with that. And also, the Ineos group, you know, there's a lot of rumors about the Ineos group planning to do lots of changes in the summer, um, shipping out a lot of players, signing new players, young talents, and blah, 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 blah. We hope to see what happens um, with that. I have no update on that. We don't know what we can do. We need to know where we finish. We need to know how much money we have, how much money is going to be released, and different things like that. But we don't know that yet. But, you know, What's our future going to be, basically? We don't know. Our future looks very uncertain. We're having a new structure at the club. We don't know how that structure is going to be like. We're having a new technical director, a new recruitment team, a new CEO, a new sporting director, and everything. Maybe we might even get a new coach. No problem. I'm going to ship some players out, get new players in. So what exactly is the future of Manchester United? That is so uncertain right now. The future of the hand is uncertain. And the future of the whole club is uncertain. All I'm going to put out to you is that some of these players that are, have this poor mentality, if the Unions group are not able to ship out these players, it's still going to be the same thing. A new manager might come in, first season plays very well, second season, everybody heads begin to drop. So I hope that they keep their hug so that he will know the players that needs to leave and bring in more good players and we can kick it out from, kick it on from there. But I don't know. So yeah, that's basically it. The future of the club is totally uncertain. Only leave a comment in the comment section and tell me what do you think exactly is going to happen with this club. But right now, right here, right now, it's so, so, so uncertain. And I don't even know what is going to happen. I just hope everything goes out well. But that's not really how football works. 
you make the right decisions, get the right results over time. The more, the more good decisions you make, the more the success of your club is likely, right? And the more bad decisions you make, the more the clubs begin to fail. And that's how we have been feeling over the years because the Glazers have been so bad. I will continue to feel if things do not genuinely change. If we cannot genuinely get new players, sell out these old players, cut down our wages, start signing players overseas, young talents, and start nurturing our own youth, youth academy, and start also bring down the player power from the club and let these players know that they're here to play for the play for us. They represent this badge, and, are, and only the players who play with respect to this badge deserves to wear it. If not, you leave. Well, let's see what happens with that.